By the end of this video, you're gonna have an unfair advantage over 90% of the other Shopify websites out there, including your competition. Most people don't know this, but 88% of Shopify websites don't have Google Analytics set up right. Not having Google Analytics set up or not set up right is like driving cross country without a GPS. In this video, I'm gonna walk through getting your Google Analytics set up so you can make better decisions that are gonna get you more sales. Let's get started. Welcome back, I'm David Dundas. If you're building a brand on Shopify, you've come to the right place because that's all I talk about here. Hit the subscribe button if you want more videos on building a successful brand on Shopify and growth marketing. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get Google Analytics set up on your website. You might be thinking, David, I already use Shopify Analytics, I'm good, I don't need Google Analytics. But if you're only using Shopify Analytics to build your e-commerce company, you're literally building it blindfolded. Can I take my blindfold off now? The most successful companies use Google Analytics as their central command center. It tells them what happened and what they should be doing next. When you get Google Analytics set up on your website, you're gonna be feeling like this. And here's why. Here are a couple examples of the info you get from Google Analytics that you're not gonna get from Shopify. Say you wanna know which page gets you the most sales on your website. Shopify will show you this view, which shows you some conversion rates and some visitors, but it won't show you the overall number of orders or sales. Google Analytics has a similar view, but it also shows you what pages get you the most sales. And then there are some things you just straight up can't do with Shopify. Let's say you're setting up a new advertising campaign on Facebook and you wanna create new audiences. And you wanna know what your past customers are also interested in so you can create new targeting audiences. Shopify won't tell you that. Google Analytics tells you what your past customers are also interested in, what they're in the market to buy, and which of these groups actually brought you the most sales. Or say you wanna know the age ranges of your best customers. Shopify, nope. Google Analytics, now you know the difference between Shopify Analytics and Google Analytics. Let's jump into my laptop to get you set up with Google Analytics. But before we do that, would you do me a huge favor, hit the like button below. It helps with the algorithm. It helps more people see this video. I appreciate you. Let's get into my laptop. So now we are in Google Analytics and we are ready to set it up. So the first step is I'm going to assume that you don't have a Google Analytics account, which you probably do, but if you don't, google.com forward slash analytics. I'll link it above and click on start for free. Now, typically you would log in to Google, but because I'm already logged in, it just puts me uh, in a, in a on the screen where I create a new account. So let's create a new account really quickly. So we can just say demo brand um, and let's, go down and I usually and check these you can do what you want but you don't need to check all these things Google already snoops enough on all of us so I try to uncheck things that I don't absolutely need this brings us to our create our account page and let's select web because it's just a website we scroll down and we click on the blue next button all right so now we're gonna set up a property it tells Google where they should be tracking the visitors. We're gonna create a site where we sell fitness trackers. Um, and let's select HTTPS because we wanna track secure visits. So we wanna make sure our site is secure, so we wanna track that. And uh, the website, and then enter the website URL. The next thing that we wanna select is uh, go down to industry category and select whatever category your business is in. Ours is, you know, they have everything from automotive to food and drinks to healthcare. Ours is going to be beauty and fitness. This next step is actually kind of important. Do you want to make sure that Google Analytics aligns with your Shopify time zone? So as you can see right now, our time zone defaults in Google Analytics to Los Angeles time. I'm going to jump over to our Shopify store so we can see what time zone our Shopify store is in. So we're back at our Shopify store. 
And the way that you find out what time zone your store is in is you, you go down to the bottom of the left-hand menu, you click on settings, click on general. As you can see, I don't have, you know, we don't have a lot set up here, but you scroll down to standards and formats. And as you can see, our time zone here is Eastern time zone, US Canada. So what we want to do is go back to our Google Analytics page now that we know it's Eastern time zone. All right, so we're back in Google Analytics. So you see here, this is Los Angeles time. So let's switch this to New York time or Eastern time zone, which is here uh, down at the bottom of the menu. Click on create and then just scroll to the bottom. You have to accept these terms and services. I really should read them. We all should, but none of us do. So let's just uh, click on accept. Our, our account is set up, our property is set up. Google has given us a tracking ID that you can see here. This is the tracking ID. We're gonna take this tracking ID and we're gonna go back to Shopify and we're gonna enter it in the form where we set up our Google Analytics. Let's right click, copy this, this tracking ID here, go back to Shopify. We're back at Shopify again. In the left-hand menu, click on online store and then click on preferences. As you can see nothing's set up here yet, uh, but here you see this section that says Google Analytics. Right click and paste your Google Analytics ID and uh, click on save. Now we're not done just yet. Um, what we want to do is we want to click on this checkbox that says use enhanced e-commerce so that you're tracking it. Uh, you're tracking all the e-commerce e conversions. So click on this and then that will save. All right. So now that we've set up enhanced e-commerce, we're going to go back over to our Google analytics again and complete the setup. The next step that we want to make sure that we do is we want to scroll down. Let's look at data collection. Um, so we, what we want to do is we want to actually set up remarketing. You could turn this on and advanced, you know, click on, on remarketing. This will automatically turn on advertising reporting features and allow ads for personalization. Click on save. It says success here. Our next step is that we want to go down to referral exclusion list. What this is, is that when sometimes in your checkout process, people may have to leave your site, say they have to pay by PayPal or other payment gateways. That's usually how people leave the site during the checkout process. And when somebody leaves the site and comes back, it looks like a completely new session and it can mess up your analytics. We're going to enter in a few URLs here, which I will link below. Your site name will by default be added here. Okay. The first one that we want to add is is pay.shopify.com. So enter this in and click on create and you'll see this here. The second one that we want to add is shop.app. The third that we, the third one that we want to add is shopify.com, just normal shopify.com without any uh, subdomain. The fourth one that we want to add is portal.afterpay.com. This is just in case you use Afterpay, with, which is a payment option in Shopify. Portal.afterpay.com is when people use that payment source. The fifth one that we're going to add is just afterpay.com. And the last one that we're going to add is just paypal.com. We've completed our referral uh, exclusion list. So this should give you really clean analytics and no breaks in your checkout process. Now that your default property settings are set up, the next step that we want to do is set up the view settings. So we're going to click on this button here, which is the back button, and we're going to click on view settings. Um, view settings is uh, the three levels. As you can see, you have um, you have your account, you have your properties, which you can add lots of properties, and then you have views, which are different views of analytics for your site. So we're just going to set up the default view settings for your store. So it, we can just have you can have standard call it standard or you can have the normal name that, that they had before, but let's call it standard. And then the website's URL is already set. Sometimes this is not checked. 
uh, bot filtering, make sure this is checked. The next thing that you want to do is uh, turn on site search tracking. And then it's going to ask you for a query parameter. The query parameter is just the search query. If someone goes to your website and they search for a product, uh, the query parameter uh, starts with a queue. So when somebody searches, you'll see in the URL, it's just a queue. So add that and then just hit save. All right. So now our standard view settings are saved. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to scroll down to e-commerce settings. And before, when we check, hit that checkbox for uh, add enhanced e-commerce analytics, this is where we turn that on. So we're just going to uh, turn this on. Um, and we can also add enable enhanced e-commerce reporting. Once you get more used to looking at your analytics, you may want to add, you may want to get more detailed with your reporting, but it's nice to have this on now, but you don't need to use it right away or worry about it right away. So let's just turn it on and we'll click save. Okay. So that's done. You have to do one more thing and then we're almost there. Let's go over to uh, audience. And then we want to scroll down here to demographics and let's go to overview. And um, we want to enable demographics and interest reports. And this is actually really cool and super useful for you. And the way that this works is that when a visitor comes to your website and they buy something, Google will track it. And down the line, once you have lots of users, it will tell you what those users are also interested in. So say you have a fitness tracking store uh, and people are also interested in um, massages or any other type of wellness product, Google will tell you that. So we want to enable this because it's hugely valuable for you. Click on enable. Great. It's turned on pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So that is it. Now you're set up to collect better data than most of the Shopify stores out there. The three most important things that you should be checking in Google analytics every day to make better decisions are one, how many people visited your website Two, what pages do those people go to three, where did those people come from? Now I got a question for you. What's one thing that confuses you about Google Analytics? Let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to respond as soon as I get the notification. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.